like to call this meeting to order for the Geneva Historic Preservation Commission for Tuesday, July 21st. And uh, call to order first. Okay. Roll call. Hamilton? Here. Solomon? Here. Stazen? Warner? Zinke? Here. Chairman Zelmer? Here. You have a quorum? Great. Thank you. Okay. The first thing on our agenda is, second thing on our agenda is approval of the meeting minutes. Uh, everyone, uh, any comments about the meeting minutes from April 21st, 2020? Mm -mm. I didn't have any. No. no. No? Me neither. Okay. With that, uh, if you could uh, get a motion to approve. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes, the min minutes from our meeting on April 21st, 2020. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. And then uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions no okay so moving on from that our next item is the five-minute field guide mr. Lambert thank you chairman Zelmer tonight's uh, five-minute field guide is this becomes that um, and talking about barns converted to houses so uh, barn conversions today produce dramatic architecture that celebrates the agrarian roots of the humble structures. The results are often breathtaking combinations of rustic and contemporary details, and sometimes captivatingly quirky. But a century ago in Geneva, when barn conversions were fairly common, the goals were to capitalize on the value of a sturdy structure while transforming it into a rather conventional building. Between 1890 and 1920, more than a dozen Geneva barns were converted to residential uses. Throughout the community, current residents pass many of these structures daily, completely unaware of the humble beginnings of these local buildings that once housed horses, carriages, hay, and oats. Following are some representative examples of converted barns in and near the Geneva Historic District. In August 1886, this house was built utilizing the 1868 Jacob Scott Barn that was located to the south at 228 South 2nd Street. The property was sold to Wealthy and Julius Alexander in September of 1871, who had been renting the house uh, uh, previously. August Wilson later remodeled the house for Miss Emily Danielson between 1939 and 1940, the alterations included relocating the front door to the center of the facade. Constructed in 1869 for Wesley Humphrey, this carriage barn was associated with the house to the east at the southwest corner of First and Ford Streets. Sold in 1893, the barn was converted to a home by Charles B. Meade, editor of the Geneva Republican newspaper. Reportedly, Portions of this building are constructed of hewn logs. Constructed by George Westgarth, an English immigrant and mason, this locally quarried limestone carriage barn was built in 1849 and converted to a residence in 1873 by Lafayette Stevens, who coated the entire exterior with lime cement plaster. George Westgarth's home, constructed at the same time as this barn, was built one block south and a half a block west at 416 Hamilton Street. The lime plaster exterior was removed before 1998 to reveal the limestone structure. It has been reported that the core of this building was the barn of Isaac Wilson, who lived at 328 South 2nd Street. This barn was moved to this property in the mid-1920s. It was known as the James Sheaf House from 1927 until the mid-1930s. From 1947 to 1970, the property served as the home of Joseph and Jean Burton, and it's sometimes referred to as the Burton House. Afterwards, it became a real estate office. Numerous additions have been made to the original barn, which is the center portion of the building, um, before it was turned to an office and then the restaurant. Built around the mid-1870s as a barn on the Atwater property, this barn was converted to a home in the early 20th century. One of the first residents 
was Mr. and Mrs. J.C. Reddington, who rented the house from Sid Castle, who had acquired the Atwater property on Batavia Avenue. In January of 1927, the barn-turned house was sold to Stuart Watson of Aurora. Watson purchased a portion of the Atwater property at Easton and Forest Avenues and prepared to move the barn-turned house to that location. Local excavator Fred Hillquist dug the foundation in April of 1927. Belding Movers of West Chicago moved the house in May. The renovation plans were drawn by Frank B. Architect, who at that time lived at St. Charles and had his architectural office in Aurora. The house was completed in September of 1927, and the Watson family moved in during the first week of October 1927. But not every barn was converted to a house in Geneva. The former estate of William Howell of the Howell Foundry included an impressive carriage barn that was later owned by Benjamin Burton. Benjamin Burton sold the property to the First Church of Christ Scientist. A foundation was excavated behind the barn in 1910, but not completed until 1914. An interesting thing to note about the First Church of Christ Scientist denomination is that they only built the portions of the building that they could afford and had the money in the bank. They did not take mortgages out for, for construction. The former barn was not moved until 1915, and then it was renovated based on plans by architect Solon S. Beeman. It was dedicated in 1916 and completed finally in 1917. The classical addition towards Second Street was begun in 1950 and completed in 1953 based on plans of architect Albert Hans Nemode of Downers Grove. But still, in 2020, the historic barn is clearly visible when looking through the parking lot along James Street behind the AT&T building. So that concludes tonight's five minute field guide. Are there any questions or comments about tonight's topic? Was it common to move build? I, it, it seems like they moved a lot of buildings. Was it always, was it just that, it, it, was it easier than building from scratch? Again, it came from a, an idea that you didn't waste built material um, and buildings were much lighter and less complicated um, than they are today. And so uh, there were a lot of buildings moved. Geneva has an extraordinary amount of moved buildings, particularly off of State Street as commercial development expanded. Um, but um, uh, many communities have moved buildings historically. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the next thing on our agenda is the review of building permit applications. The first one will be for 15 North 2nd Street. You can take it away, Mr. Lambert. Thank you, Chairman Zelmer. 15 North 2nd Street is a request to install an additional front door that will include some storefront alterations and the extension of the existing roof. The property is located in the North Geneva Historic District um, that's listed in the National Register of Historic Places and in the northeast quadrant of the local Geneva Historic District. The property has evolved significantly over time as outlined in the staff report. Um, just in brief, from um, the upper left corner uh, in 1912, you can see that the, uh, the parcel we're looking at tonight was actually part of a larger um, property that was purchased in the 1920s by Martin Seastrom, who was a local contractor. Um, in 1923, he built um, a small office and garage um, at the south end of the property. Um, that, that building that is labeled as his office or, the, or, or a store building right here at the lower area um, is probably a moved building, speaking of moved buildings, um, that was then converted for his contracting office. The um, property then in uh, 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 1928, uh, 1928 a house was moved from uh, 4th and State Street onto the property, um, which is the house that exists there today. And then subsequent additions were made to the property um, by 1945 um, to uh, uh, enlarge the, uh, the garage at the back and enlarge the, um, the, uh, the former contracting office. There we go. Um, between 1952 and 1962, um, the building was renovated by 
Pauline Evans Sargent. Um, she and her husband had purchased the property um, uh, several, several years earlier. They had been renting the property and then purchased it from Martin Seastrom. And they converted to um, not only a home, an apartment for themselves on the second floor, but also a uh, renovated storefront. What they did at that time is they removed the veranda that wrapped this corner of the house and on the north side made an entrance to the apartment and on the south side built an addition that connected the house to the former store building and also then um, took out the front of the original store building and added about a two to three foot section um, to make that a unified front across the building. You'll notice um, in the images that the, uh, de the architecture of the 1950s um, addition departs dramatically from the uh, Italianate, where the Italianate is very vertically oriented. The uh, 1950s is very horizontally oriented with these hopper windows. As I mentioned, the front of the store building had been, um, has been modified, which is clearly visible in these, uh, pic uh, these images submitted by the applicant. You can see the area here where um, the storefront was expanded towards the front by approximately three feet and the framing changes. You can see that the wall framing changes as well. So the um, one story addition, the one story facade that faces Second Street um, on the right side of the building is not a historic uh, facade as far as the original building goes. It does date to the 1952 uh, to 1962 era. Um, So again, the proposed work is to replace the canvas awning that is over the current door. Um, that's highlighted in this yellow area. And then to add a second door to have a private entrance into this office suite. So it would impact the um, existing uh, windows and doors, or windows rather, it looks like, and requires some siding replacement on the front of the building. Again, in the floor plan to show what they're doing, they're simply adding a second doorway in to make a private entrance into uh, the separate office unit. So what are the concerns or the questions that the commission should be asking themselves in regards to this particular request? I provide you a lot of historical background in the more details than I've gone over tonight, but um, I provide you more details about the people who've um, been associated with the property. So the first question would be, is the uh, building as it stands today without the additional door representative of a significant event or accomplishment of any individual or individuals associated over time with the property. Were any business associated with 15 North 2nd Street particularly significant in the commercial development of Geneva? I did not touch on this, but just to reiterate what's in your staff report, um, Mrs. Sargent uh, married a second time. She married Hirsch Hubs. Uh, for about four years, she ran a women's dress shop in this building um, that was called Country Casuals. I could not find much information out about that store. Um, did not find many advertisements or anything for it. There was another small clothing shop uh, at the same time in a portion of the first floor, and then a doctor occupied the rear, uh, uh, <coughs> the rear office of the building. Um, does, and then number three, does the request of an additional front door and roof extension irreversibly alter or remove a noteworthy feature directly associated with any of the identified events or individuals? And I'll, we can come back to this slide when you're having your discussion. And then um, look at the architectural significance of the 1952 to 1962 storefront. The questions that the commission needs to resolve um, as they review the request is, one, does the home retain sufficient architectural integrity to be recognized as a 19th century Italianate residence? Two, are the mid 20th century modifications of 15 North 2nd Street notable as innovative and arch innovative architectural design? Um, <clears throat> number three, is one, uh, one era of architectural design represented 15 North 2nd Street more significant or more intact than another? Four, which we discuss quite often, have the changes over time achieved significance in their own right? In other words, are they significant on their own um, over the past 65 years? And five, does the request of an additional front door and roof extension irreversibly alter a notable architectural storefront? So with that, um, I would turn the podium over to Dan Marshall of Marshall Architects, who is the architect for the applicant. And um, 
he can add anything that he would like to add and answer your question. Hello. Oh, hello. hello again. Okay, Dan Marshall, Marshall Architects, 812 East Main Street, St. Charles, Illinois. Thank you, Michael. It's, I mean, we are so lucky to have somebody with the passion and the presence of mind through all this to do this kind of research and tell us these stories in a quick way. It's really a pleasure to listen to. And the research on this home was a delight for both Josefana Aleman and myself to look at and to read. Um, and the story of this property seems like it's in constant motion as these old buildings that you think have been there, they've been moved around and they're being changed. And this, the story of this is, is, is that it's, it keeps changing. And we just want to be a little footnote in that story, uh, not even a footnote by adding this door. I feel like it was the, the method to, the way we designed it, I don't know, should I move on to the drawings? That's the drawings. Um, we, we tried to just do it very simply so that we weren't setting off the balance or, or changing the nature of the 1950s. Uh, a lot of, I don't know if you know that during this time period, this was a thing to add modern additions to historic buildings. Uh, Fraser, Raftery, and Orr made their, made their name doing this up on the North Shore. You look at these old buildings of theirs and you're looking at it and you realize, oh no, they did the addition, which is the modernist addition to that building. And that's fun to see and it was a real <coughs> trend at the time. So I think that has a little bit of significance in that I didn't want to try to recreate a different style. I just really wanted to keep with the same style, make as small of change as possible. And actually, I thought the roof overhang extension cleaned it up a lot rather than trying to leave or extend the fabric awning, which is really low and makes the space feel dark and um, claustrophobic when you're walking into it. But the windows have to change, but we're gonna use all wood windows matching the windows. We have a custom guy doing that and the, the door's gonna match. We thought it would be smart to match the door. Uh, and it just, to me, when we drew this, it just looked like a very mild change that didn't really uh, affect the, the modernist style or didn't, didn't hurt anything and, and actually kind of resolved it a little bit because as it is, the, the spacing's a little off. Um, but that's, that's what it is. We couldn't get we couldn't move the existing door over without trashing the windows that are already there, so we didn't want to do that to try to equalize the two windows. Uh, and there's a wall in there already. Uh, right now there's a small vestibule that would be very hard. We'd have to make that bigger to get a door through there. And we were trying to avoid having you go into one door and then split into two spaces because it's those lobbies now are the places where people are passing each other and it just seems smarter and more manageable to have two separate doors. Um, so there's not a common space and just this one little common space in this building that somebody has to pick up and clean up and vacuum. Um, and that's the only space. It's not like you can hire someone just to do that little space. So it makes much more sense to have two doors uh, in a practical way of keeping the building going. As you could see in those pictures, it's not in great shape. We're, uh, Josefan is putting a lot of money into it. It's gonna have a new life to it and we'll hopefully get some tenants uh, that will enjoy its location because it's in a great location in town. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I had I had a couple of questions. One, the roof extension mm -hmm. that's going to replace the awning. How is that going to connect up with the existing roof? Is it going to be at the same pitch? It blends, Just, yeah. It's, yeah. So it's going to come right off yeah. the existing roof? Yeah, it's just an extension of the eave. And so, uh, you know, okay. really at that pitch, too, it's a very subtle change uh, 
It'll be the so same that material. white line over the awning is just going to move out and down about uh, four, in, I guess about 12 inches, about 12 okay. inches. Three. And the other question I had about the, the facade was the windows that were being affected. Yes. What, what's the plan for what the new windows are going to look like? So they're uh, kind of behind the dark area. It's hard to see. Do we have one without the yellow on it? No. Oh, it's not. <laughs> I never really could see. Yeah. It's, uh, here, I have a drawing. Uh, do you have a drawing? I can show. Them. In your package, you should have a clean elevation. So it will be similar to what's on the north end of the <coughs> Yeah, it's very similar to that. Same okay. stack, same rhythm, same division, just two instead of three. Um, so it and, and the, gla the glass panel changed, I don't think you would notice. And the glass panels will be more square as opposed They're to rectangle. Square proportion, yeah. I see. Okay. Which, you know, I mean I guess we're trying to make sure that it doesn't pretend to be something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is the new windows. We'll know that it's the new windows now. Okay. Uh, and we thought we would try to get, there's a little transom over the door and, and that we would just limit the signage to like over the door, whatever office tenant it is or on the door or something. But it's a nice door right now, simple door. Mm -hmm. I, I had a question about the about the house itself, the 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 Italian house. Yes. Um, I think somewhere in our information, it talks about the siding that the siding is original. Is that is that possible? Uh, parts of it might be possible. There are some repairs that have happened on the back over the years. You can see where that's been patched in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but the front is is actually looking pretty good right now. It it looks amazingly good. Uh, yeah considering the tree's been up against it for quite a while too. So mm -hmm. it's, it has been neglected for a while and this process is taking a while. So it's, you know, it, it really needs some tender, this, this thing had, was rotten to the core. Uh, as we dug into it, we thought there was a little water damage and as we pulled it down, the, mm -hmm. everything was just, you know, we had to, it had already been broken and there was, ramps and stuff and things built over the top of the floor to try to make it level and so now we're re-putting in structure in there and shoring it all up. Mm -hmm. To answer your question Commissioner Zinke, the, the largest portion of siding replacement on the front facade seems to be between the first floor and second floor windows where the historic porch roof mm -hmm. was, mm -hmm. which is again pretty common sure. when the mm -hmm. porch has been removed. And then also the lower portion underneath the first floor windows where the porch deck would have uh, fit in. That looks like it's been patched when you go close. But it's but it appears that the corner boards, the rakes, most of the window trim is and most of the siding that is still exposed is early, if not original. Of course, we know that Martin Seastrom was a contractor, so we know that he was doing some work. Um, but when you look at it, it seems to be early or original um, siding. Well, that's, that's refreshingly amazing yeah. for yeah. us to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm fine. You're fine. Okay. The, um, I guess I don't, it, I don't have a huge issue with, I, I don't know whether the house it's that the addition is, has created historical significance in its own rather than just the Italian eight house that's that's still visible and I, I do tend to agree with you Mr. Marshall that adding that a little bit of pop away from the build adding your awning out a little farther the roof out a little farther is actually going to help that yeah, it's, so it's too bad when they built the addition they didn't give a little bit of relief between yes. the existing oh, and the, yeah. the new it's like right there the 
So, yeah. but uh, mm -hmm. corner so, window would have been really cool. But. Yeah, it would have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, uh, but uh, I, I, what does the commission think? Do you, do you think that it's created? Do you think it's historic on its own as a whole building, or do you think that the Italianate is more the historic integrity of the building? I think the Italianate is what draws your attention more so than the addition that came on later. It's mm -hmm. smaller, it's more prominent. Well, I mean, you know, there was that period where they were converting a lot of these mm -hmm. houses into businesses, office space, or, or you know, business mm -hmm. space. And I mean, I I don't have an issue with the windows or the door or the, the roof extension. I, I think it's a a good way to create a solution and with minimal impact. I think it complements the the addition that was done in the 50s. Keeps the building around too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It keeps it useful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no impact to their original. Right. Yeah. Just evolving mm -hmm. from the 50s. Someday we'll be in one of Michael's stories. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, do you think that I? Do you feel like? Does the commission feel like it? it the front, the additional front. I, I get the feeling that it doesn't really hurt the character of what's there now. Uh, I don't. I don't believe so. I, I don't think it does either. I think it. 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 Re some of its of the 50s character just the way it the redesign is I mean, it may be changing it but yeah, I mean you can have the same door and you're just reducing a stack of windows so yeah. it can be a very similar look the only the only issue I see is that it, it goes from a uh, more horizontal feel to a more vertical feel but you did kind of pick up the same yeah. on the other side of the Italian eight is the same sort of more vertical feel for the stacked windows. So I don't see an issue with it either, architecturally. So. No, I think the two ends kind of balance. Yeah, they're starting, yeah. And plus the thing is you're going to see more glass with the loss of the canopy. Mm -hmm. That's so true. It, right. Right, right from that picture, it looks like there's only two windows high, whereas yeah, it's yeah. really, it's really side, low. Three. Right, right. And if the ex the extension of the roof is only coming down, what about 12 inches? You said. I yeah. Mean, you know mm -hmm. that canopy comes down a lot more than that. Yeah. And you'll be able to see the windows better and more yeah. natural light. And, and it'll balance more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that a 12-3 roof, or is it something less than even that? Uh, I think it might be around 12-3. Yeah. And you're yeah, only coming out three feet, so you're only driving about 12 nine inches. inches. Yeah. yeah. And we'll ice and water shield the whole thing because it yeah. really should be a little steeper, but. Yeah. It's just following the existing roof on that is what yeah, it that is. Was, my only concern on was that it looked like it almost would be, if you look at the pictures, I wonder if the, the eave is going to be right on top of the the window head of the existing windows yeah. uh, three it's stack, actually, which it really is. It's even shown in your documents that way. So. Yeah, we, we sloped the soffit on that so that when as you approach it, you see some siding up above that window. And we're showing it pretty steep. We're showing it at 612. So oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. So it's actually a little more than... It goes right down to the top of... I mean, the, the, the gutter line's at the top of the grid of windows. Yeah. But the soffit slopes up, mm -hmm. um, up inside there a couple of feet. So. Do, do you have any intention on doing something with the... I believe it's called the sunroom to the left? No, uh, that's sort of the apartment entrance hall now. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting little space that uh, it's kind of like a porch. Mm -hmm. uh, and although nobody's using it for anything right now, and it's, it's more like a bike storage location for a renter up, 
we, we don't have anybody in the building right now, but I'm imagining and that's how it, it's going to be used as a package have, drop. <laughs> does it have stairs that go to the second floor there? Yes, or? yeah. Yes? They, they go up a little bit to the first floor, and then you turn and you go up a long set of stairs to the second floor. I see. And is that an outside stairway then? Oh, it's right in the middle of the house, actually. Oh, I see. Okay. So this... Uh, the two lower windows on the Italian 8 portion are actually part of the modernist office. There are stairs that go into it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see here that go up into that. They call it the file room. Um, so that portion is part of the office area. And then you can see the entry where you go and you go up some steps and then you go up this long stair. And it, it had been like uh, separated and then reconnected and then separated. <laughs> this thing has gone through just the ringer in terms of how it's been used and, and the differences and very interesting building. And I think were there lawyers in there? Does anyone remember recently? Yeah, so they just had, you know, like people everywhere. How many different floor levels are there then? There's got to be, there's got to be well, a whole lot. Yeah. Well, that's part of it is what we're calling unit C is actually not level with unit A. It wasn't level. Now we're, we, because it was built up because the floor had collapsed. Oh. But actually, it is level now, so we can make the two doors the same. Oh, okay. But at the time, there was a step up there because they had built a structure over the collapsed floor. It was huh. very, very strange. Do we have an actual date on, on the original uh, house? Is it 1912-ish? The original Italian house? Yeah. It's 1870s, 1880s. 1870s? Yes, and that was it moved was, there in 19... It was, mo it was moved, right, in 1928. Okay. Oh, here it is. I see. Okay. Sorry. It was at where the vacant lot on 4th and State is, is where the house came from. In 1928, a building was proposed that it never got built. State and Fourth? Mm -hmm. Fourth, like a That empty room. lot that's there? I thought, yes. I thought a church had been there. There was, but there was a building proposed there in 28 that, uh, or yeah, 28 that didn't get built. I don't know. The, the, oh, your thing on the north side, where the parking lot is. On the south side. Oh, yes, yes, okay. That vacant lot. Okay, okay, all right, okay. Okay, thank you. It's <laughs> interesting. And one thing I will point out, I did, I, I didn't really talk about. I, I can usually find if there was an architect or contractor on some of these moved buildings. The only one I could find was Martin Seastrom, but he was close to retirement when all this was done, so I don't really know who the architect was who did this to this building and made it so many spaces and and, and rearranged staircases and things like that. So it's it, it's it's that, that part of the history doesn't seem to be available. Yeah. The, uh, I think it's the new unit C. Can you tell by the framing that it was multiple buildings? I know there's yes, the three. Yeah. There's a three foot extension to get it out even with the other building, and then yeah. it was two buildings connected together. Yeah, it's interesting. They, uh, Michael and I were talking about this. Is that the front front three units? You got poured concrete foundation frame you know, as we would see it now. In the back, it's rubble foundation uh, and, and almost barn-like construction because there's a bottom beam on that and then just pieced together <laughs> because windows have been filled and mm -hmm. things have been changed. And, uh, and so, it, but there was really no telltale signs of anything. There was one little window that was in one of those pictures, old horizontal window that was interesting to see. That's buried in there up there, that green one. Hmm. But it would have been real close to the front, so I don't know if that was original or not. But you can see below it, there used to be a bigger window in there at one time. But it's hmm. it's some kind of a bottom horizontal piece there. Um, the rafters are framed like a like a house, more like a shed than a barn. There's not a there's not roof purlins in there or anything it's it's rafters with ties across the bottom pretty simple hmm. construction in there and then the back half is more like a garage 
Mm. The floor was sloped. Mm -hmm. Mm. There was a big set of windows on the back where someone probably filled in a door and uh, it's concrete. So it's been, so there was this old core and then these two additions put on. Mm. Interesting that they decided to go, I mean, they spent a lot of money going across the front for picking up three feet. So they yeah. really were trying to make a style statement here with this thing and not just get the space. You know, it wasn't just functional. It was some kind of style trying to change to modernize, which was a mm -hmm. thing in the 40s, late 40s mm -hmm. and the 50s. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed the... Um uh, the brick wall that's on the south yeah. side. Yeah, that's And I was looking at the brick, and I and I wasn't sure if this was old brick or 1950s brick. That's a good question. We didn't really talk about that at all. It is an interesting wall. Mm -hmm. I know there's some history on it. I, I, I don't remember off the top of my head. I want to say it was put in the 1970s over some alley discussions there, but I don't remember for sure. And I think it's reclaimed from a building here in Geneva, but I'm, I don't quote me on that tonight. Oh. We're going to leave it, and you know, to us, it's a really, it's a cool, mm. nice thing right yeah. there. So, yeah, it's a little interest to the front. Yeah, it doesn't well, help with interest. the exposure. You know, mm -hmm. people kind of feel like it's tucked in the back. I think maybe clearing out some some of the landscape might help a little bit or something. But mm -hmm. it's we like the we like the subtleness and the quaintness of it. We don't want it to be flashy. We just it, that's the kind of tenant we want. <laughs> so, you know, we want it to be, we're not trying to uh, make it, make it uh, jump out or anything. We really want it to just be there subtly. Okay. Anything, uh, any other comments from the commission? Mm -hmm. uh, any, any, uh, if, if not, if I can get someone to entertain a motion. My motion to uh, approve the changes, the renovation and changes for uh, 15 North 2nd Street as presented. I'll second. Okay. Um, okay. You could. Uh, Hamilton. Aye. Solomon. Aye. Zinke. Aye. And Chairman Zellmer. Hi. Thank you. Thank you for your time. And Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again, Michael, for all the help on all of this. And You're very welcome. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, our next uh, case is 118 Campbell Street. Lambert. Again, thank you, Chairman Zelmer. Uh, 118 Campbell Street is a, a request for a. Um, thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank, thank, you. thank you for coming. 118 Campbell Street is a uh, request for a siding replacement of a, uh, an existing garage. Um, it is located in the uh, Central Geneva Historic District which is listed in the National Register of Historic Places and is located in the southeast quadrant of the local Geneva Historic District. Um, these images are from 2017. You may recall that at that time we, um, um, uh, the property was owned by another owner and there was a request to make some modifications to the rear. Um, and uh, so these are a little bit older pictures right now, uh, but it, they, these are the best pictures you could get really of the garage as it looks uh, today. The garage uh, started out as a small okay. garage on the property, and then sometime around 1950, uh, 1945 to 1956, it was expanded into um, two apartments, and the garage was, was expanded uh, back on the lot. Sometime uh, around the mid-1980s, uh, the um, Synthetic stucco panel boards were put on. The, the false half timbering was added to the building, which is, again, as has been pointed out by different people, in the, including the previous owners, is out of character with the rest of the very arts and crafts bungalow uh, stucco residence that's on the property. This is addressed as two different properties, so I refer to it back and forth as either 118 Campbell or 122 Campbell. The house is actually 122 Campbell, but the living units over the garage are 118 and 120 Campbell. 
So this is coming to you under 118. These are current pictures of the house after renovation, after the uh, um, improvements that were approved by the Historic Preservation Commission. So if you remember, the, uh, the front porch roof was raised slightly for, to help with drainage and a standing seam metal roof was approved by the commission. And the building was painted and um, the lower um, dado or bulkhead was painted out white as opposed to the previous brown um, that had been on the building um, before. The exposure of that side is about eight inches um, exposure. And you can see, um, I'll do it on both sides, but there was a screen porch here that's also was added. And it's also got a clabbered siding. So this area right in here. And you can also see that a part of the west facade of the garage is visible uh, from 2nd Street. So it is, even though the garage is tucked back on the property, it is visible from both Campbell and 2nd Street. It's being proposed to use a um, smart side product. I'm not going to pass these around, but you have seen them before. Um, so it will be a smooth um, LP smart side with about an eight inch exposure to uh, be sympathetic to the existing um, uh, lower data or bulkhead on the house. And the trim will be, again, a smooth finish uh, um, LP smart side trim that you've approved previously at other sites in the historic district. In speaking with um, uh, Mr. Talawi from uh, Legends Exteriors and Construction, one of the things that we talked about, there, weren't, there aren't architectural drawings being submitted with this, um, so it's a fairly straightforward uh, garage replacement. I talked to him about some of the details um, that are found on this, uh, the uh, 122 Campbell Street, the residence, which are um, fairly simple window details. And um, uh, what I didn't want to be coming forward, I wanted to clarify with, was that we weren't going to have elaborate window details on the garage that kind of uh, overshadowed the house. And he's confirmed that that's not what they're going to do. They're going to do something, again, very simple. So. As a typical example, what um, and he can and Mr. Tlawi can explain more. But typically, what we've been looking for on a window project, this would be something with very simple side trim, a simple head with a, a simple drip cap, and then a true um, uh, sill uh, look. What we don't want, and has happened uh, on some projects we had no control over, is we do not want the picture framing. Um, in the historic district, um, which is a modern way to trim a window out with the same trim all the way around the window without that traditional sill look. Mr. Swaway has confirmed that, that uh, they are able and, and willing to give a more traditional, simple uh, window treatment on the windows on the, on the garage and the apartments. So, um, that's the wrong slide. Um, so the, um, the project is, again, fairly straightforward. It's a uh, getting rid of this 1980s um, um, uh, stucco board, which was done probably at the very end of our period of significance for the historic district, um, and is certainly not in keeping with the uh, historic home, but it is a change in science, so it does have to come before the commission. So, Mr. Slawi, if you'd like to come to the um, podium and discuss anything or add to it, um, the arrows at the bottom of the keyboard will go right or left, and will go forward or backwards. Just wanted to say uh, hello to everyone on the board, com commissioners. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. Um, I know it's uh, a little late in the evening, but um, again, I just wanted to uh, thank you for the time um, to hear us out in regards to our uh, proposed project and uh, application for permit. Um, again, going off of Mr. Lambert's um, assessment of the property, we are again trying to do a, a simple change to the facade. Um, the existing facade is in advanced deterioration um, throughout. Um, and, you know, in speaking again with the HPC, um, we wanted to try to uh, mimic clean and minimalistic looks um, in regards to the period. Um, the, we, we planned on going back with uh, white LP um, to try to match the dwelling. Um, we want to also match the current lap uh, sizing that is on the dwelling as well. Um, the only thing um, that was brought to my attention that um, I also shared with the homeowner was the desire for uh, the no picture frame 
trim around the windows. Um, so I didn't have an opportunity to um, uh, pre uh, send uh, some of those out, but we have I have some of the the, the window trims um, that I don't know if I can just share with you, but these are also uh, a composite product. Um, but these are going to be um, in particular for the header trim um, and drip molding and drip cap, um, as well as the uh, historic sill, which we plan on um, utilizing on all of the window openings throughout. Um, it's, uh, again, you know, going to be a challenge just because um, of the existing layers <laughs> that are going to be underneath um, this um, substrate that's rotting. Um, but I just wanted to, you know, make sure that we stressed that we were going back with a, a historic um, district approved product um, all throughout. Um, the exception to us um, replacing everything with LP um, and composite materials is the soffits and fascia, um, as well as a wooden staircase, um, which we just intended on painting white to match um, the LP siding and facade. Okay. Any questions? Do you have any questions, Mr. Hamilton? I don't. Okay. Ms. Zinke? Uh, no, I'm good. <coughs> sure. I, was, I was pleased to, to, uh, to hear that you're planning on using the same color um, as the house, since this is a semi-permanent uh, material, we, we get to talk about color. Um, so I think that looks that, that looks good, and and I really like the the fact that you got rid of the brown on the building. The, the whole building just looks so much more elegant uh, in that particular color choice that you used there. Yes, and it and um, I hadn't realized how much of the back building you can see from the street until I see the photograph. I didn't notice that when I was out there this afternoon. So um, I think you're doing a great job. Thank you. Uh, the uh, trim around the windows, is it going to be dark like the existing the, the residents, or is it going to go? Uh, we had anticipated just using a white trim um, around it. Um, that wasn't something. Um, that I, I actually should have had the forethought in regards to asking Mr. Lambert about that to try to emulate um, what's on the house. But typically, um, most LP products, they, they can come uh, pre-colored. Um, so that wouldn't be uh, out of the realm of possibility. It, it's, I would probably seek guidance from the commissioner, from the commission in regards to uh, if that's something that they wanted or desired for us to try to emulate what's on the existing dwelling um, to match that out. Um, I know that the immediate uh, house to the left of 122 um, is a white house with white uh, three uh, inch lap siding um, and white windows. So I know that it's on a different property altogether, but in terms of keeping um, a uniform look throughout the neighborhood, um, I don't think having white windows um, would be off from uh, what we would try to emulate. But again, I think uh, I would look to the commission for guidance if, if that's something that they wanted us to, to match. I, I would just say to, um just because there's more parts to this project that aren't under your review, but there are some windows that are being replaced on the rear of the house home, and I think it would be important to know. I don't I don't know the material of the windows, but if you if you trimmed out the um, trim with dark trim to match the house, you may not have dark sash. I don't know what's being done with windows, so um, uh, so that would be a consideration. If they're not paintable windows. Um, you'd have white windows within a dark sash. So you have kind of two things. You could require that they, you know, do a dark window and a dark trim, or you could let the trim and stuff be subtle and have the, the garage become a non-building, essentially, on the property, uh, sec secondary to the residence. So I think you've got either choice would meet the essential um, 
ideas of the design guidelines. And I don't know if this is allowable to pass around, but this is the exact um, existing window unit. Um, it's again on the rear of the property, um, mm -hmm. so but it's. With the, it's t facing towards the elevation where there's a lot of exposure to sun. Mm -hmm. um, and so what it's doing is the rotting again of the trim boards around it. But in terms of what's existing, you do have a black tr or a darker trim that goes around, um, white windows. Um, so again, I don't know how the commission would want to do the lead with that. But it, again, I would uh, seek guidance from you guys. No, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with actually handling the windows differently I just wanted to know whether you had an issue whether which way you were going with it but your your idea of having all one just a just a neutral palette would not be a problem I don't, okay. I don't see that as big, that big that issue. was the original intent yeah um, and, and was actually to, I think it might be better because it, it would it, it won't take away from the main house the main house is mm -hmm. is is the star of the show yeah, so true. yeah and again, I just wanted to keep everything as simple and as clean and minimalistic as possible. So um, I didn't try to add any um, ornate or elaborate trimmings sure. or anything of that nature. Um, again, I just, uh, it, white was the original plan uh, for the trim around the windows. Okay. I'm, I'm, I, I um, agree with that. I'm good. Okay. Well, unless anyone else has any comments uh, I, I think it's a, a fine solution to what you're trying to get done and glad to see that it continues the building <laughs> <laughs> thank you well, the, the siding exposure um, did you did you decide it are you going to do the eight inch like we are going to do the eight inch um, and again I have some product printouts in regards to the lap siding no, no, that's good. You can but do it, that. But it, yeah. is, it will be the eight-inch board okay. again. We will try to emulate what's on the on the main dwelling. All right, that's good. Thank you. Since you've had a few concerns about just the details, yes. I would suggest that you incorporate those specific details in any motion that you might make. That you know, eight-inch exposure siding, narrow trim, and 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 uh, you know the the white on white concept, whatever you want to put in there yeah. motion, but I'd be very just clear. So it's on record. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you won't be, I mean, I see that the, the, the trim around the bulkhead is actually where that where it's like a mitered corner, but you were going to go with just a straight, uh, just corner boards rather than doing the mitered corner, which I think again is fine. It, it's more of standard detailing within the historic district. And I don't think that's an issue again. It, I think it's, Mix, makes the house more prominent with that. But that was your intent, correct? Correct. Okay. Okay, anyone, uh, any other comments? Just to, just to clarify that too, they, they have gone to a narrower corner board to a four inch instead of the wide standard okay. six inch again to be more sympathetic to the very refined details of the house and, and the garage. Are we ready to put together a motion? <laughs> uh, I, I'll give it a whirl. Okay. <laughs> um, I move that we approve the project at 118 Campbell Street as presented with the following additions that traditional trim on the windows replaced Traditional trim will be used on the windows that are being replaced. That the eight inch exposure on the siding and what was the other? Minimal corner boards. Corner boards. The, I'm sorry. Minimal, Minimal corner boards. And, and a, a minimal is six inch, four inch, four inch. corner boards. Sounds Sorry. Good. I think we're good. I'll second. Okay. Do we have to mention the color since it's semi permanent or no? Um, you can. I mean, um, I think we've got it before the minutes that 
sorry, you've got a recording the minutes that you're looking for a white that's going to be complimentary to the house. So it's in the minutes, but I don't think it just has to be in the motion. You're doing the motion, so you decide. Are we good? Okay. Hamilton? Hi. Can I ask a question? Sure. Sorry. So, Mr. Chang. And if you could state your name when you. Hi, my name is Tao Chang. I'm the homeowner. Hello. Okay. So, the question I have is that. Uh, so I didn't know that if it's semi-permanent, that the color is not, we don't have a choice on the color. And the color is being dictated by the board. Uh, either, I don't think it's a major issue, but I have to check with my boss, which is my wife, <laughs> <laughs> on the trimming. Um, I think we either go with white trim, or we may, she may decide to go with a trim that matches, the color matches the house. So I'm not sure yet at this time. Uh, nice. So with, with respect to the board, if it's okay with you that uh, we can have a choice on the trim, either match the house or stay with white. But isn't the house white? No, the trimming around the window. Trimming on the window is oh, 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 the, no, the, 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 the siding the is fine. We're okay. going with white. We're not changing that. Okay. Uh, you I mean was the voting window trim. I'm yes, sorry. The window trim. Okay. I was voting for hot pink on the siding by wife. <laughs> so, uh, but the trimming itself, I'm not sure. So, I see. Okay. I really have to check with the wife. It's okay with you. We can either give us to give us a choice, or at least give my wife a choice. I really don't have a say so on that one. But it's either white trim mm -hmm. on the window, mm -hmm. or a trim color that matches the current house. I'm I'm okay Thank with you. that. Which I think we're we I don't think we specified. I don't I don't I don't think it it, I, it it's a semi permanent thing. It's not a permanent thing, and I don't know whether we would even really. It. You you, you have the, you have the ability, but I think you've discussed both options. I think the question that the commission probably has, and and this will be a question for um, your wife Sally, mm -hmm. to. Um, I don't know what the window material is on the garage. I believe there are wood windows, um, if I remember right. So if they can be painted out brown also, it will match the house. If they're a white vinyl, for instance, that's going to be very hard to paint. So having brown trim with white sash is going to look very different from the house. So I think that's the discussion that the, the Mr. and Mrs. Chang will be having. And I think what I've heard the commission say is that either option is fine as long as it's either all white or m mimicking the brown and brown of the the house if the window sash can be brown and then mm -hmm. the trim can be brown mm -hmm. so i think that you know i think they're giving leaving that they're willing to leave that option okay that's what i make sure because uh okay i know sometimes my wife and i don't think <laughs> alike <laughs> okay so, thank you thank you she's not even here to defend herself <laughs> <laughs> actually that's pretty much normal yeah. at least in my house <laughs> Okay, so back to the motion. Um, Hamilton? Aye. Uh, Solomon? Aye. Binky? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, again much. very much for your time to the board. Looking forward to the project. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I think what's next on our. Is the secretary's report next? The only thing I have for you is uh, two things. One, you all should have received a copy of the annual report uh, digitally in your, um, in your mail, so I don't know if you have any questions about that. I'm happy to answer questions um, that you might have if you have them later on. That has been submitted to the State Preservation Office. It's been submitted to the City Council and the Mayor. So, um, again, we file that annually to, um, as part of our certified local government requirements. Um, and then lastly, I just appreciate you all accommodating the new uh, guidelines that we have for meetings. I know it's not as comfortable, um, and especially if we have a very long meeting, it's going to be less comfortable. Um, when our full commission is here, we will work to make sure that we still keep our social distancing, um, there, so there may be some other changes in the future. But otherwise, um, that's all I have for my report. Okay, great. Thank you. And then uh, any new business from the commission? Is, is any update on the uh, Noble House? Are they close to being done? Uh, the 
work that was requested by the commission has been approved i don't know where they are with the building permit process i think there are still some issues um, that are being resolved but i have not followed that but the issues as far as historic preservation where we came to our concessions um has been, have been met i know that work it inside pretty vigorously mm -hmm. which which house are you talking about the noble house the uh the restaurant right on state street the 1909 kendall building oh oh, oh <laughs> yes yes yeah oh yes yeah i have been hoping something was happening there The other, the other question I had was the, um, the, the building that the, the um, oh God, it, it's just, just uh, east of there. Was that originally painted brick, or was that brick that was not painted? The building was when it was remodeled in 1924 was exposed face brick. It was painted in the 1980s that mulberry color okay. and and. Um, Oh, you, you mean the Erday building? The Erday building. Ah, yes. Okay. Yes. And now it has been painted white. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't require a permit for painted masonry. Correct. The the only thing I'm sorry about is that that the um, the here to uh, the um, what am I trying to say the the stone trim which had never been painted has now been painted for the first time, so I just wish that someone had gotten to them and suggested that they had let that stay uh, uh, natural limestone color. That was discussed with the um, design team oh, and the artists. Yes. So, um, and, and again, if you recall, when that came forward with the window replacement and the, the storefront alteration, they did discuss that there was only one layer of paint on the building that was removed fairly easily, but they were choosing, they said at that time they were going to paint the um, paint the brick to unify it because there were several kinds of face brick mm -hmm. over the course of the third and state street elevations so um uh, you know that was our choice at this point we don't govern uh we don't permit painting right um there are concerns with historic buildings with painting the masonry that uh, cause damage over time but that's not addressed in our process here at geneva Sh should should we though require any request to paint unpainted brick to come before the commission just because of the damage it can do to the to the material i mean it's it, it seems contrary to the to the standards it is contrary to standards rest assured i i i, I make this discuss i have this discussion frequently with with staff um it's not been something that we have taken back up to the city council to uh, or or dealt with with the building to the building permit process to require a permit because we can't just regulate that in the historic district only and I'm not sure people are ready to address it citywide I did just have somebody stop me today and uh, was asking about a building that was just a house that was just built this last year that was red brick and it was sold and it's been painted white this week I guess um, and someone was kind of disturbed about that happening um, it's you know it's it's a trend right now to paint everything white mm -hmm. and um that trend is disappearing in the circle in the professional journals the white has come and gone but it's still being done in the public realm so um whether the trend lasts too long and whether it becomes an issue i don't know well, i'm less concerned about the trend and more about the damage it'll do to the well that's what i mean the the, the the trend is leading to potential long-term damage yeah. and, and removal i know we had the discussion when um the restaurant went in here on james street and painted the front that was a originally the back of a building um but um every building gets painted uh, rest assured i i discuss it with with um with with david degrude our community development director he knows he's gonna hear from me that it's against the standards so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm is there is there any is there any possibility that when they come before us for a building permit um that that one of us discuss uh, ask politely what they intend to do with the brick um you have done that you did that with the Erday building um and i think that's fairly that's within your realm because it's one of the uh, soi standards that we're supposed to uphold as a certified local government mm -hmm. um the problem is we can request that, but we don't have 
the ability to permit painting. R right, I, I, I understand So that. it's an education process, and believe me, I, I work with every applicant who comes forward mm -hmm. um, with, uh, paint, uh, with, with painted brick and try to discourage it because of the long-term problems with brick. Mm -hmm. But again, I don't have a permit Right. driven argument right. to um, right. to say they can't paint yeah. mm -hmm. is it possible that 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 conversation with the applicant uh, happens here uh, that that you do your song and dance about how how much uh, damage is happening to the brick when it gets painted to do it to do it privately when you talk to it in the office but do it again here at the at the meeting Oh, certainly. I mean, my, my conversations with the applicants are always trying to prepare them for the questions that may be brought up at this forum. So mm -hmm. um, that's certainly within your realm as um, enforcing the Secretary of Interior's standards. Again, okay. it's an educate. In that case, it's an right. education process with the hope that people will reconsider that. We'll reconsider, there is not yes. a there is not a way to prevent it at this point here in Geneva. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. There is no painting permit required. Okay. So there, so it's because there's no requirement for, there's no permit process for painting, then we don't review it. Because it would have to be citywide to be, it right. couldn't be specific to the historic district. Correct. Right. And mm -hmm. most likely it would have to be painting, period, and then you've got multiple surfaces, so it'd be like, be careful what you ask for. Right. Yeah. It, yes. It, it, because then you'd get every. You'd, you'd have to get every. You'd have to get everyone. And yes, yes. We'll be working until one in the morning. One, one, one of the um, you know, one of the nuances of the Geneva process, and we've talked about this off and on over the years, is that our review is tied to permit review. In some communities, it's not. In a lot of communities, it's not tied to permit review. It's if you're doing any work on the exterior of the building, it comes before you, the Historic Preservation Commission or the Architectural Review Board or whatever they have. Um, but our ordinance is set up that it's our review is based on. Uh, the requirement of a and need for a permit for the work. So, I, for instance, just today I had someone call me who's looking to buy a house here in Geneva, and he wanted to know what the process was for applying for a permit to install shutters on the home. And I said, there is no uh, permit. He said, are you kidding me? I was like, no, I'm not kidding you. He said, well, that makes a big difference on a house. I'm like, yes, it does, mm -hmm. but um, we don't permit that. We don't permit gutters. We don't permit storm windows. Um, so we don't have review where some communities that aren't tied to permit they review all of those things mm -hmm. You get a certificate of uh, Appropriateness and then you can get a permit from that mm -hmm. yes. Okay, I, that's about all I had anything else from anybody mm -hmm. Okay, I don't see any public left so if I can get uh, uh, motion to adjourn. Adjourn. Second. Second. Aye. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Set. We're adjourned. Okay.